hello everybody and welcome to day 10 today is my fade out background um but i'm doing an added little added extra um basically i'm going to do because of the nature of the book and it's lost ocean by joanna basford i'm going to do a bit of a sand effect as well purely because the fade out i'm going to do it is like water uh, and this picture kind of spoke to me so i was like this is the one we're doing so to do this fade out it's basically where you start from the center and work your way outwards um let me just check i've not got i don't know if it's me moving the book or if that's on um <laughs> autofocus let me just check no it's not it must be me moving the book um so yes it's where you start with your jackets color in the middle fade it outwards a lot we all start from the outer corner and work in so this is just opposite and on the edges i'm going to do another fade out but from the edge fading out into the page so the whole background won't be covered but there'll be a background effect on it so you will need a compass and you will need a ruler now my compass has got a piece of lead in it so it depends what compass you use and for this fade out we'll be using aqueous opal emerald and everglade i don't know if you can see all them there you might not be able to see the monarch ones but not the other ones there we go can you see that my zoom is not very good on this camera i really could do with a new one so what we're going to do now is just mark out from the top to the bottom so i'm going to start at the very top here you're going to put a little mark in there and then i'm going to come right down to the fish at the bottom from the mark we've just left and that's eight so 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 three so that is eleven and a half is center eleven and a half here is center so bit virtually at the back of that fish is center so i'm going to come across here now and go on the line as far as we can so you've got eight and a half so there's 15 so i'm just being very gentle because that is in the background so 15 16 17 so we've got the half of 10 is five and half of seven is three and a half so 13 and a half 13 and a half from there sorry no eight and a half is center here so we've found our absolute centre, which is bang in the middle of that fish. My mass was a bit bad then. Don't tell my uh, tutor. <laughs> Where are you the rubber? Oh, dear me. I had to take yesterday. I don't really want to open another one. We had about six of these big rubbers. And I keep opening them. Would you believe I tidied all this desk up yesterday? And I keep tidying it. Ah, there it is. And not putting things up where they're supposed to go. So what I'm going to do is just going to take out my markings because obviously they will affect. The last thing I want is um lead smudging so we've got our center spot so what did we say that was so let's see what we are from here to there so that's 11 and a half 11 and a half so we want to divide 11 and a half into four it's a bit of mathematics isn't it so two and a half so it's gonna be about two and a bit inches So let me mark this out. So we're going to take, we're not going to use the first colour, so we're going to go in with um, opal. So two and a quarter. 
In fact, I can use pencil on this one because it's in the drawing. So we're going to go two and a half. Even though it's not, but they're just short, but that doesn't matter because you've got shorter areas. So two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half, which leaves us with three. So it ends up actually at two and a half at the end of the actual background. So that's good. So let's go this way and work two and a half. Going to be in that fish. Two and a half is in that flower. Two and a half is in that flower. And then leaves us with a bit of a edge out that way. So now we've plotted out them. And then I'm going to change my compass end. So bear with me a second while I do this. It'll only take a minute. I should have my other compass here ready for when I want to just whiz my pencil in. But I have these drawing ones for when I sketch. So um, let's put that up there so I don't lose that. bit of a squeeze you can do this bit by eye if you want to but I don't purely because I've done it by eye a few times and I get it wrong Just make sure that's straight. Okay, okay. So our first colour, because we won't start with the first one we're using, because that will be in the centre. So this is our next colour along. Okay. We're gonna Oh, this one won't let me do it. I've got the wrong compass out. Oh right, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Need my old compass, but here yeah, well. So I'm gonna use my bigger one. So with the markings we've already got. And put that on the two and a half which is here and I'm going to go around very gently and then I'm going to move to our next marker because I can rub these lines out I'm not too worried on well, the very light and then our next which is here and then again we're going round so if I bring that up to screen now just so you can see can you see the very faint line I've got or the grid I've got there that is how we're going to start and what we're going to do so we're going to leave them lines in for the second and we are going to right that's all of a sudden move or something very strange <laughs> okay so all of this first section then will be um not that color <laughs> aqueous so all on the outside we're just going to do for now just a fine layer and when you're doing a fade out it doesn't have to be strikingly dark you can do a really light fade out 
you can be really heavy with it it's entirely up to you but most fade out backgrounds are quite soft so i'm just going to colour up to that line for now and i'll show you what i'll do before i get to that line itself because all this bit if this was a normal true colouring and not my background series all these little parts will have been coloured so you wouldn't have to be as careful because you'll have already got them coloured in so right now i'm just going round and making sure i don't go into the lines i shouldn't be and if you're better by eye than i am you probably wouldn't need to use the compass but i just wanted to make it as even as possible And it feels good to be using my Black Widows again. So very, 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 very light hand I'm using here. I'm not being heavy handed whatsoever. And I'm holding my pencil quite a way up the pencil. And what I'm going to do, that little lead line now. If I had a little tiny Tombow, that would have been better. A little Tombow micro eraser. I do need to get myself one of them. So what we're going to do now is just rub out that line that we've made because I don't want because if I try and mix that with the pencil, it will be darker in just that area. So lightly go around the edge. Don't rub too much, you don't want to affect the tooth of the paper. Okay, and what we're going to do now before we move on to the next colour, we're just going to slightly come past that line, ever so slightly. And this will be our blend line into the next colour. So you want your end to look like it's disappearing and once you've got that disappearing effect that's you know you've done the right kind of blend line because you don't want it to have an edge where you can see the very line at the end because then you're going to get that even when you put your next pencil on you're going to see that harsh edge so you just need it to soften off the edge So most seasonal colourists probably already know this kind of effect. But that's fine because not everyone watching will be a seasoned one. So next we're going to use opal. And then we're going to travel opal then to our next line. But where we've done that fade out is where you're going to join opal. Don't worry about it being a perfect blend right this second because we are going to go back with another layer so what i do is go around the whole circle just blend that in and then we can concentrate on moving out once you know you've put this over your blend line i'm just going to come a little bit closer just let me get that zoom a little bit better i think i can fit i wanted to fit all the so you can all see what i'm doing a, a, bit, a bit better <laughs> so virtually my pencil is is at this angle if you can see it's not like this and it's not like it's a, a nice virtually level angle and i'm just touching the page with it so obviously there's a object in the way there and if you can't travel outwards like this turn your page whichever you find easiest i'm not turning my page purely for the purpose of the video but if i was doing this at home on my own I would have turned the video 
uh, turn the video, I would have turned the page. So once I've concentrated on that blend line and I've blended the two colours together. And you know when you've done that nicely, like when you can't, you can't see between the two colours. It just blends in. Lovely. And this is because you're keeping your hand light. And you always choose three or four colours and your last colour needs to be light enough that you can travel it to the end and it virtually just disappears. That's the effect that we're going for. So now I've coloured in all the blend line. I'm going to work out now towards my next line that we put in with the compass. And once again, we're going to stop just short of it. So then we can rub it out and put our blend line in again. And this is probably a good one to learn on because you're learning to blend in between things. So it's a bit harder than blending just in an open space. But if you can get used to blending in this kind of environment, you'll be able to blend anything. Trust me. Trust me when I say... So all them areas are then covered. Can you imagine how many whips I'm going to have at the end of this background series? <laughs> I'm going to have loads of whips. That's my year cut out at least. Isn't it? With all these whips that's left. I have the um, biggest amount of whips in his in um, the colouring community. Yeah. <laughs> I have to send some whips out to people and say, "Colour them." Finish doing that. Be a good challenge, that wouldn't it? Finish shell artist colouring. There we go. That's nearly finished now. Bit in there. You can start to see it's a very, very, because you've done it with your compass. It's a very even blend out, fade out, whatever you want to call it. But these are the things that we think, oh, you look at these pictures and you go, oh, I can't do that. I can't do that because there's too much going on and I, I can't see what I'm meant to be doing. And what would I do? And you colour all the bits in and you're like, oh my gosh, like, what do I do with the background now? There's so much going on. But if you do this background first on these busy pictures, then you can work your colours out to the background you've done. And if you keep your background nice and soft, then anything you do do in the forefront of the picture... It won't be as in your face if you do too much. But if you do your background very, very deep and intense, then you need to lighten up what you do in the foreground. If that makes sense. So sometimes doing your background first makes it easier to plan your page. Because a lot of us, I know I certainly don't, I don't plan my background. If I've started colouring my main image i think about the background when i've done it so sometimes it might be nice to think about your background first and then plan your picture out okay again now we've used that color my rubber i'm gonna rub the oh missed a bit there let's pop that in I'll go, we'll come back with that in a second anyway, but I'll just rub that line out that we've put in so we don't get any mucky lead. It's only I've only done mine very, very light, light enough that I can see where I put it. 
shouldn't be using my hand actually, I should be using my brush because I'll smudge my pencil work. Okay, I'll probably brush it off, off with the size of these arms I've got. <laughs> They're absolutely massive. So there's my arm and then these are the like big winged one. So next we've got emerald. So then we're going to take opal again, if you remember, and we're just going to travel slightly oh, further out into that blend line. So there's not too much of a difference but if you've picked quite good blendable colors anyway you shouldn't have a problem trying to blend them at this point point. and when I'm picking colors I just sit with a random piece of paper and just swatch out until I'm happy with the colors I've got and I can sit there for hours with that piece of paper and be like, no, 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 no. Oh, I have got a dirty mark on my page there. I just rub that out. I don't know what that is. Right. Is it like an imperfection on the page or something? I don't know. So bringing it slightly out, see how it fades out to nothing. You can't really see the end of it. That's the effect we're going for. And it doesn't matter this bit if you kind of off your circle slightly that you've put in because it's just a blend line. So in theory, it's covered up by our next colour. So our next colour now is emerald. And we're going to bring that into the last colour we've just used. So these are a brighter colour. So I'm going to work around all these areas now. There's lots of tentacles and stuff going on here. But you can see the effect we're going for. And then we go over it with our next layer and then we do it with the blender pencil it'll be lovely and blended in right, I want to know because this is a blending picture and I love the comments that you get after so I want to know what's everyone's favorite blender to use at the minute I use the Derwent one and I actually quite like that colorless blender um, but I have heard a few different types of ones now. So I want to know which ones you prefer to use. This is probably the gentlest I've coloured in a long time. I can't normally get this gentle. There we go. So the furthest we get round. And I'm just trying to show that it's quite quick as well to do this thing, even though, I mean, if you was to do this on a whole page, it would probably take you forever. You know, to blend the whole page out. So our blend line is up there now. So I'm going to fill all these areas. A nice gentle touch up to that pencil line we've made earlier. It's probably the last section is probably going to be the hardest because that one we're going to have to start thinking of blending it out. So we want it to go lighter, lighter, really light. So that's our kind of fade out line. And we come to that so this edge here that we're doing needs to be really really light as we travel towards the edge of this 
So I'll do this section with a really, really light pressure to your pencil. Just down here now. And I'm loving these colours that we've got going on. Nice blend. I just hope they look the same on such a wider blend. <laughs> so I always think, oh, they look good. Um, on that slightly tiny little piece of paper but when you come to do it on a bigger you're like hmm no, I don't like that so we'll see how it goes so in between his little leggies oh just coloured in his leg <laughs> don't want to be colouring in his leg Well, it'll be fine because when I come to do this colour, I'll um, do the crab. Is it a crab? Yeah. When I come to do the crab anyway, he's going to be quite bright. It's kind of like a Caribbean clear water effect we're going for. Like it's so beautifully clear that you can see your feet through it. And as you know, you're in the UK, we don't have any oceans that are clear, I don't think. May have some further down south that are clearer, but definitely up north, we have dirty, horrible seawater. Over here. Windy. I'm going to kind of go in between these here. Like I said, I'm going really light towards the end or the edge of that pencil line. Just making sure I'm not creeping out of shot. Very easily done. It's around here. I didn't realise that comes in there. So I need a bit of that aqueous. That is a blend line there. So, and there you have it. So that's that section in. So then we're going to rub that line out that we've made with the pencil. All the way around this edge. My daughter's getting excited about something on Animal Friends upstairs. She's either on that or Roblox. And she's weighing down something. She must be sliding down a slide. She's like, wee! You can hear her. <laughs> okay, and then our last colour ever glade. So before we do that, pick your emerald back up. And then just make that fade line again that we've done. But really make this gentle. Because we really need to work on fading that out to virtually nothing with this last layer. And in some places you're not going to have much blend line.
Lovely, just look gorgeous. They're just slightly coming out. Well, you can see the hook most of this page on there. Bit that I've not loved out there. Well, if that's like an imperfection in the page. See there, I've not, it's not rubbed out there. And I could see that, so that would have frustrated me if I hadn't have rubbed that out. Because <laughs> I'm terrible for bits that stand out and like hawk eyes. Okay, so let's get our Everglade. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to work section by section with this one. Um, purely because this needs to fade out to nothing basically so I'm going to work in this section here between there and there I'm going to travel that out and literally as I get towards that edge these bits where the points come in you're not going to be able to blade blend them out to nothing but definitely here towards this point we are so here you're taking your pressure really really light extremely light so you're just tickling the page basically and tickling the page again so you can see this pigment on the page but literally so little pigment that it just the colour just goes whoop, to gone so for to make sure I get this right I am going to turn the page so please bear with me because I don't want to get it wrong I want it to look really nicely faded out So here it's going to fade out down towards this bit. I have a visitor. So excuse my dogs if you hear them. They get so excited when um, people arrive. <laughs> and they're like, Row! and believe it or not, the littlest one is the loudest. So fading that virtually to just leaving a slight bit of pigment at the end. You see that? There we go. Just fading it out to hardly any. So it's come here, turn the page again for that third eight. So keeping your pencil really light and we're just tickling the page. There we go. So again, I think most really light handed colourers would find this probably a breeze to do but if you're anything like me and i'm terribly heavy-handed it would be it's a, more of a challenge so now, watch my microphone there now here blending it in again and then lightening that off towards 
that outer edge. So my aim is for it to still look white, but it's invisible, if that makes sense. That's what my aim to get it to look like is. But you know, there's pigment on the page, but just ever so slightly. So, and then this top section here, they're having a nice conversation at my front door. <laughs> no idea what they're all talking about. Do you not think it's like it makes you itch and want to go and say hi? You know, is there? So this top section here, colour it in, and pull it really light here. Surprised you didn't hear all the kids come running down because Nana was at the door. <laughs> They're all engrossed in the technology. Right, so just tickle in that very edge there. Okay, so what we're going to do then, we're going to repeat the process. And then this time we won't have no rubbing out. And we're just going to go back over. And this will be our last layer. And all this does is just cover up any white areas that might have got left. in between I still got yet to try like that whimsical kind of background that we do with ink and stuff I want to master it with pencil so that'll be a good thing to try and do whether it'll be on a background series it will but might not be on this 31 days of backgrounds <laughs> Definitely not. So if this was on, say, let me find it. Say this kind of background, you would have started the dark in the corner here and you'd have just made that go out into nothing on that page if you get me. But because this has got a nice little barrier around it and I saw the fish and stuff, I thought we can actually get that to look like water and then i'll do the fade out from that with the sand so that'll be good so i'm just going to turn pencil because it's getting a real flat edge just bear with me for two seconds Sorry about that. Just had to go and turn the eating off because down it up here. Whew. And I've got a jumper on. A woolly jumper and I'm like a scorch your
so this aqueous is just deepening up that centerpiece we're giving it a second layer If you want to, I could deepen up just this very centre point here. On this side, add your own invisible circle there. And then just kind of bring that out a bit more. Just play with your fade out. It's just personal pre preference really is how much you want this to look. Um, the depth you want it to go to. Just because it's a fade out doesn't mean it has to start off light it can start off dark and then go light 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 so just keep going on this bit until you're happy with your center color and the black widows i find gorgeous to blend um So if you like these, they are a good pencil. They're not expensive because you can buy them in sets that end up at 144. But because you can buy them in the cheaper sets over time, it doesn't feel like you've paid out such a big massive overlay for them. Outlay, should I say. Not overlay. <laughs> Okay, and then we're going to go to our next colour, which is opal. I'm just going to watch how heavy, because opal can quite easily go too dark. And that's not my aim here. And again, so you don't get lost in where you are, just working each section so you know you've covered. Just kind of create your own sections. Okay, so I'm going to come into this section here. I'm actually really liking these colours. Come into this section here. And it's quite easily to get lost to where your bands are. So just watch what you're doing. You don't travel into your next band and you've not realised. just keep that in your thoughts when you're colouring in you're like oh because I've done it before and I've gone oh and I've gone out of my band should we say um 
and I've been like oh, see they've gone too dark that's not working what I'm doing take some of that layer off and resume back to our colouring like I said in this background series I'm not deleting any bloopers so if I do go wrong you're going to see me go wrong at the time I go wrong and what I do to fix it so hopefully we don't have too, th too many things going wrong but we could have colour combos going wrong but right now this is a good one I actually really like it Is there enough pigment down on there? Just go over this little bit here. There's too many white bits here. Next up was emerald. And just brighten up that layer but what I won't be doing is going over our last layer of Everglade because we don't want to be doing that because that's our fade out layer all we're doing right now is making sure the three main layers that we've done are fully pigmented and coloured in. Or else, if we do go over that, I mean you can, there's no saying you can't, but for the effect that I want, which is this really soft water effect that's really clear, I just want to put a nice layer up to it. I don't want to come over it, if that makes sense. Because when you do your blender anyway, that brings the pigment out even more. So it's nice just to use what you've already put down. This will just help smooth it out. Right in between here. Or just see colours. Like I said, I'm just being careful I don't travel too far out into the Everglade. this all comes out here because our band comes down here so once you start blending it in then you can't see where one band is and where the other band is and it just all starts merging into one so we do have to be careful that we're keeping a mental memory on where them lines were originally
anyway, can I? So what I'm going to do now is get my blonde pencil out. Just going to give it a good sharpen. I've got some colours on it that I had on it before. I'm not bothered about it being too sharp, but I just don't want them other colours transferring on. So. Let's get rid of them. Okay, this is just the Derwent blender, colourless blender. There's also different ones. All we're going to do is start off on the inside. And I'm going to work this section, then that, then that. And this just brings that pigment out and gives you a bit of a seamless blend. Now, I don't always use blenders, I'll be honest. I don't think you see me using blenders very much. But for the purpose of this, I would use a blender. Most definitely. I kind of do a lot of blending with my lightest pencil, but this just helps give it that smooth finish that you want. <clears throat> just need to get a dry throat on this bit. Just a few seconds before I cough everyone the head off. <laughs> I could feel that tickle building and building and building and I was like, oh, I'm going to end up having a coughing fit on camera. It doesn't matter which way you take your blender pencil. I'm just doing circular motions, little circular motions. And it just flattens that tooth out. And gives your pencil a gorgeous finish. You see the difference between that and that. It's not cooling down any up here, gosh. I tell you what, I've just been um in my asda to get some bit that i forgot to get and it was absolutely heaving i thought it'll be sunday i'll just nip in Woo! you won't think we're on a national lockdown put it that way we're only meant to be one person out shopping and everyone it was just like families shopping And it's just a shame because it's it's things like that that are stopping the country from getting better. And we need to take a leaf out of Australia's book and New Zealand and see what they've done. I think in the UK. Because they've got it under a lot better control than what we have. And people are saying, oh, the government have not got it under control, but it's not. It's the public. It is literally the public that's not doing what we're supposed to be doing. And that's a combination of people don't believe it's happening 
I don't believe it'll happen to them. I opened my eyes once my when my husband got it. I'm not going to lie, it did. Um, I'm not saying that I was a real breaker or anything. I wasn't. I was just a bit more thinking, is this real or is it not? No, my husband was fortunate. Well, so fortunate to get it at all, but fortunate that he got the the milder dose of it, where he just lost, had mainly like a fever, uh, and lost the sense, taste of smell. But other than that, he was able to eat. He was able to sit up and watch TV and stuff, and he got a bit of a cough. His troubles now are after, are after the COVID, what it's done to his lungs, which is weird. Because I thought, well, that'll only happen if he's been in hospital, you know, and had to be on ventilators and stuff. But it's not, he can't go up the three, the two flats of stairs we have in this house without coming back down absolutely out of breath. It's shocking, actually, how it's become on him. It's a shame. So, you get the idea of the burnishing here and what we're supposed to be doing. So, as we're coming to the end here, there is pigment on the page. But just enough that the blender flattens the tooth and spreads that little bit of pigment that you've put down. But predominantly, it's a very very lighter version of the colour you started your blend with. I think what's hard here is <laughs> making sure you've blended every section but I mean it's not hard to see where you haven't been because it's obviously not as smooth. I just love the more pigment it drags out when you do actually use a blender. Well, using a lighter pencil does blend your stuff together, but it also can put a lighter layer over the top of it. Where your colourless blenders literally don't leave any residue, they just blend it in and boost the pigment you've got on your page. You know, and they're not dear, they're not expensive to buy. I've had mine absolutely ages, I have this and a burnisher. But because I'm blending here, I want to, I'm using this on the whole thing. And you can still manipulate your colours, you're not completely where a burnisher will burnish and flatten out your page and won't be able to colour on it again where at least this leaves tooth it doesn't completely flatten it out it just blends your pencils together and brings the pigment out so at the end if you wanted to burnish it all then you can So I've kind of done that half. We've got this section to do here. I don't know what it's pulled out there, but it's picked up something dark. It could be the ink off the page. The actual line art. Because I've nothing dark there. Or I may still have a piece of, a bit of lead that's not run out. That could have been what's caused that. See the difference now between the two? We'll pull that up. Let's give it that gorgeous.
So let's just do um, just get it nice and clear. There we go. So can you see the difference between that half and then this half? It's just slightly rougher and not as smooth, but that's basically what you do. Um, now, if I could, I would speed this up, but I've not done the video on <laughs> my editor because it takes ages. It takes hours to process it on my editing software. So hopefully this video is not too long of a video. I'm going to be a lot quicker on this side now because I've shown most of it on that side. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be a lot quicker. Like I said, this is completely the opposite for me. I never do back brains first. So I'm looking at it now and my little brain is saying to me, you're catching some of them white lines that need to be a different colour. <laughs> and then I start thinking, oh gosh. But I could get rid of all that with the micro eraser if you've got one. But like I said, most people will be doing this from once they've finished the page rather than so this bit don't don't worry about what I'm doing too much here purely because I've shown most of it on that side I'm just trying to get through it for speed now so I can show you the sand effect it's a completely different sharpener I don't sharpen these to a point either. I just take away the wood so it goes a bit longer. Obviously they do get a point, but I don't like working with the point of the blender. I like it flat. So if I don't get a point, I'll just rub it on a piece of paper until it's a, it's got that flat edge that I, I need for... That's personally how I use it. Everyone will have a personal preference as to either use a blender I think by the end of these videos I'll know what my dad's term meant when he always used to call me he could talk the back leg off a donkey that one <laughs> no way because I could talk the back leg off myself I was sat here talking to myself I'm talking to you lot aren't I but I'm talking to you that are watching, but at this moment in time, whilst I'm recording, I am sat in a room yapping to myself. And some people probably think, they walked up here and I didn't realise I was recording, they'd be like, why on earth is Michelle sat talking to herself going? <laughs> oh, is this bit I've not done. Around here, just got the edges to do now. And this bit that I'm going to show you in a minute, it doesn't have to be the whole, um, you don't have to do the whole way around the drawing. It can just be in sections, so I'm just going to show you sections of what I'm going to do.
don't to think whether it's these pencils I'm allergic to. I kept having a funny itching period last time I used my Faber Castell. And I was like, I've used these before and they've never made me do this. And um, they're in a tub. Some of them are in a tub with these Black Widows. And now I'm using Black Widows. I can feel my face like itching again. So I'm wondering if it is these pencils. Or there's something on the coating. It's very bizarre. Well, there you have it. That's my very, that's my fade out from there. Now, you could just stop there and colour the rest. But what I'm going to do, just to be a little bit creative, I'm going to go in with my two pencils, which is Fawn and Light Mocker. Let me just recheck which is the lightest, because I get confused as which is the lightest. So, our dark of the two is light mocha. So I'm just going to start off in the corners here. And I'm literally going to come out. To say there. And I'm going to come in this little point here. And to say here, and this little point dips in a bit. And do this little tiny bit in here. And same on this side. Just travelling it out ever so slightly. The same in this bit. And it's like water's met sea. Uh, water's met sand. Should I say. There we go, and then in here, I'll fill it like that. Do a little tiny bit here. And then we're going to use our fawn. And this is why I'm keeping zoomed out so you can see the whole picture. And I'm just going to slightly bring this out now. And I'm going to bring it out into where I pull literally on the side of the pencil. And we just go into nothing. Just like this. I'll keep drawing that out a second. grab this back because I've got a bit here that needs to be darker and then inside the tails here inside the tail there and just a little bit in there and just a tiny bit in that section. 
and then we pull that out. Right. A bit more. I think by the time I process this video, it's probably going to be hitting the same time as I go live. So keeping my pencil on its side now. I'm going to bring start traveling that color right and then not much more to do kind of the aim is so your edge is invisible so so long as your edge you can't see your edge of it your job's done and then on this side And all I'm going to do then, I've got Huntsman and just the little creases that you, let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. Just focus it again. There we go. And your little just ridges that your pencil's made just kind of make your little sand divots in these here. I'm just doing them really fine. And just do them in your little in the little areas here where you've just gone with your darker colour. And it helps just give it that shaw look and sandy bits. <laughs> it's just being that little bit creative and just using the pencil strokes you've already put in. They make the best marks you could want for sand. That's all I'm doing is just following the little crease, you know, your pencil divots or where the tooth of paper is. I mean, you could emphasise this and go further out and do the same thing. It just gives it that little shore edge effect. And then lastly with the once I've done all these bits um we'll do 
we'll use the blender pencil to just blend that edge out and then it's finished off really nicely <clears throat> I'm just going to put a very slight few here So initially you've done the fade out, this is just finishing touches or if you want to add these you don't have to. I'm just doing this because I want the sea effect and the sand, the ripply sand you get. Turn it on the side. I'm just following, like I said, the bits that have... on with the pencil so you're you've already made these lines you're just highlighting them now with the brown or with huntsman A little few in this bit here. And then let's just pull that out. Let's pop that on autofocus. It's terrible having to do this focus by manual, but it's honestly it's the worst camera ever. I do apologise. So all I'm going to do, once you've done that, I'm just going to get the blender pencil and then I'm just going to start from where you've done them edges. I'm not going to go into that because it'll... Let's see what it'll do. Oh, it doesn't do anything, it just highlights them. So we're just pulling it out like this. So it all, just so you lose your pencil strokes really, and it gives you a nice um, blend of some stuff. Same on this side. It just pulls all them lines out. Nice smooth effect after. Just turn it round. So don't be afraid to you don't have to fill the page for a background you don't I mean you could go if you could be as creative as you want you could go as far as drawing little umbrellas there and people sat on little mats on the beach if you wanted to I'm not going to go as far as that for this but if this was me just in a colouring book I probably, that's probably what I'll do if I ever finish it all I was just taking out all of them little lines.
and it's just enough but it's nothing in your face it's just a gentle little fade out from the frame but like i said if it didn't have that frame you would just blend that out into nothing but i just wanted to add a little bit of finishing touch to that and there you have it my fade out background that looks really fitting for this i mean you could work on the middle section a little bit more i think if i was i would just work on that a little bit more um in this blend here and i'd probably take it out i'd maybe go a slight bit darker um but these are the things that you can do once you blend you pull your camera out or you stand back and look at it depending on how, how you color um it's always good to hold it up and have a good look at what it looks like because that gives you a really good perspective to where you need to improve sometimes what i do i'll take a picture with my camera and I'll see what it looks like. Or I'll look at it through my camera. And I'll fix it in places it needs fixing from my, through my camera lens. You know, so that's it. Look, I think that looks stunning enough. I just like how it's got this really blue centre that's then fanning out into this into nothingness and then starting again with the beach part so i hope you've liked this background this is for day 10 and i will see you all on day 11. i will link in the description the combos i've used even though i have gone through them on the video i will put them in the description below and the books that i've used will be in the description as well so thank you very much everyone and i'll see you on the next one